the temples not mentioned, priests, prophets, the law, the Holy Land. I mean, there, there's a reference to the River Jordan, but that's it. But this doesn't mean Job isn't a Jewish work. It almost certainly is. And yet, Job represents the righteous man, even the righteous pagan. His story is universal. For all of us face the problem of unrequited evil and of undeserved suffering. Next, Job is a model of endurance. James, in the New Testament, refers to him. As you know, James says, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Job is a paragon of prayer. And he, he's mentioned twice in the book of Ezekiel. I'll read uh, from chapter 14 of Ezekiel. Son of man, if a country sins against me by being unfaithful and I stretch out my hand against it to cut off its food supply and send famine upon it and kill its men and their animals, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they could save only themselves by their righteousness, declares the sovereign Lord. And so we see in the book of Ezekiel, he's commended for his righteousness. And yet, despite his righteousness, he cannot transfer that to others. He does intercede for others, but there gets a point where, uh, well, no one can intercede. An honest man, a real theologian, a righteous man, a model of endurance and a paragon of prayer. And I'd like to read just a small excerpt from a commentary I've enjoyed by Francis Anderson on Job. The Bible, especially the New Testament, sees two sides to this opportunity. From the agony of abandonment by God comes a ministry of compassion that extends to all companions on this dreadful journey. 2 Corinthians 1, 3-7 What is an unendurable indignity at the time becomes a holy honor in memory. Moses in Midian, David in his hideout, Jeremiah and Joseph in the pit, Daniel in the lion's den, Paul in more than one prison. Like Job on the city dump, their life would seem to have reached its end. The long wait, sometimes for years. The silence of God. But deliverance came, and with it, a gratitude never felt by those who never knew despair. We'll end the podcast as normal uh, in a discussion of what we learn about God. And truly, we learn a lot about God uh, from this book. First, he does allow good things to happen to bad people, and he allows bad things to happen to good people. Uh, see also Matthew 5.45, that the rain comes on the righteous and the unrighteous. We, we may not like this, but that's the way God is. Next, his presence and nature are overpowering, utterly humbling. If we are awed and humbled by his work in the natural world, then we should also trust that he rules the moral world. God is just. We don't need to question him, though it's good to ask questions. The Lord is not pleased when he's misrepresented or his word, his ways are misrepresented. God doesn't always answer our questions in ways we expect. God uses suffering to help us to mature spiritually. And he doesn't look at our suffering the way we do. And last, in the story of Job, God foreshadows the death of another righteous and innocent man, one whose suffering redeems the world, Jesus Christ.